Greetings, I'm Professor K, and in this short video presentation, we're going to take a look at how we can use Shodan to find vulnerable devices that are connected to the Internet. In our last lab, we looked at how we go about ensuring that we have complete anonymity while we're on the Internet using the CSI Linux Analyst and the CSI Linux Gateway. Whether you're doing a pen test or you're doing digital forensics investigation work, make sure that you are able to hide yourself and your IP and your location from any prying eyes. To do this, we're going to use a gateway, and in my case, I'm using a gateway in conjunction with a VPN. So the first thing we have to ensure that we do is to log in so that we can get the most out of this search engine. If we don't have a account, then we're going to be very restricted to the search filters that we can use and the other features will not be available to us. So I've gone ahead and used a EDU account that I have. I have created an account and that was automatically for me upgraded to the full version. I'm now ready to type in my username and password. I'll go ahead and hit enter and now I'm currently logged in. So how the Shodan search engine actually works is it grabs banners from devices that are currently connected to the internet, such as routers, switches, refrigerators, webcams, whatever it might be. That banner information has keywords in it, such as the organization, or it might have the city, or it might have the IP address. And there might be information that's inside of the banner that states that there are default passwords being used. So the formatting of your query is actually quite easy and we'll be going through this as we go through this tutorial. But know that anytime you use more than one word in the Shodan search engine, those words have to be wrapped in double quotes. So if I want to look for a search phrase such as default password, I have to wrap that phrase, those two words in double quotes. So I type in my first double quote and I type in the word default followed by the word password and I close that with a double quote and I hit enter. Now any device connected to the internet that the Shodan search engine locates that has the words default and password in the banner will be returned in the search results. So in this case we see that there are 53,495 devices located throughout the world that are currently configured to use a default of some type and in some cases a default password. So let's take a look at that. As we scroll down here we see that there's a lot of devices that are currently configured with the default username and password. In this case we see that there's a Cisco router that is currently configured with the default username and password from the factory of Cisco and Cisco. And you can scroll down a little bit further and you'll find some more information here such as we have a device that is currently configured with the default name of admin and a password of 1234 and this again is pulled and given to you from the banner information of that device. You can scroll down here and you'll see some more information about default usernames and passwords. Now over here on the left you see that we get a lot of good information about what countries these devices are located in and what are the top services that are located on these devices that are currently configured with a default password. And we also see the top organizations that belong in these countries that are running these services that are configured with a default password and if we scroll further down you'll see that we have the top operating systems such as Linux and Windows Server 2008 and you can scroll down a little bit further and you can find the top products so if you're looking for this information well then you can go in here and you can refine your filter just by using the right search filter up inside of the search block as we scroll down through the results on the right side of the page, we can see that we have some devices that could easily be accessed. 
In this case here, we have a web authenticate issue with this device using the default name of admin and the password of 1234. And if I click on this little icon here, it's going to take me out to the logon page. Now, this means that I can just type in the word admin for the username and the password of 1234. If I click OK, I can then probably gain access. That's not going to happen because that would be illegal. And I don't recommend that you do this unless you are conducting an authorized pen test or a digital forensics investigation for a client that owns the device. Let me go ahead and cancel out of here. I'm going to go back on over here and we're going to move on. So we can also gain access to other devices such as webcams, Cisco routers, different types of access points. If they're vulnerable, we can copy the IP address of the vulnerable device. I'll go ahead and minimize this. Come back to this in just a moment. And what we're going to do now is we're going to bring up a terminal session and I'm going to type in PuTTY. This is the application I'm going to use in my attempt to gain access to this router that is currently using the default username of Cisco and Cisco. So I'm going to go ahead and just say open. And let's see if I get into it. And it says yes. The server's host key is not cached. You have no guarantee that the server is the computer you think it is. So it gives me all this information. And I can accept this. And then I'll have the key. And then it will authenticate me to that device. But we're not going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of there before I get in trouble. All right, let's close this out. Let's bring back up our web page. And I'll go back over here. Now, right now, I'm looking at default passwords that are global. They're all around the world. But what if I wanted to narrow my search down to a city or a country? I could do that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and type in a city. So let's say that I'm doing my investigation or my pen test in the city of Tucson. Okay, that's fine. I can just type in city colon. Now I type in the name of the city. And if that city only has one word, I don't have to wrap it in quotes. So I'll just type in Tucson and I'll hit enter. Now the results are going to come back and it's going to give me all of the devices that are located in the city of Tucson using a default username and password. So now I'm looking at the city of Tucson and I can scroll down here and I can see what the top services are that are being used with a default username and password. And I can also go down here and I can see what top organizations are currently using devices that are configured with the default username and password. So you can also see what the products are down here. Now, if there was a bank in here or a credit union that had that information, that might be very valuable to a cyber criminal. So as a professional that's doing a pen test for a client who might be a bank or a credit union, this might be something I would want to find out. So I would look in the city to which I was currently working in, and then I would see if my client's organization is one of those organizations that shows up using a username and password that is default. So what if I want to find FTP servers that are running in Tucson using a default or anonymous login? Well, I can continue my search and I can use another filter such as port. I type in the word port, give it a colon, and I don't have to wrap this in quotes either. I can just type in 21, which is the port for FTP, and hit enter. So currently it says that there are no FTP servers configured with the default password. So let's just go ahead and delete this search filter. Again, let's conduct another search for FTP servers in Tucson. Now we have a result that shows that there are 35 FTP servers located in the city of Tucson. And if we scroll down, we can see that the services are HTTPS and FTP, which is located on nine of those servers. And we see that there are top organizations listed for us. And if our client was one of these, then we could be concerned. 
and we also see what top products are currently running FTP for these clients in the city of Tucson. But normally, if I wanted to access an FTP server, all I'd have to do is just type in FTP colon forward slash forward slash followed by the IP address. So if I go back over here and I grab an IP address, let's just grab this one here. This one here has an SSL certificate that it wants to share with us. So now I can just paste that IP address in there and I'm using the protocol FTP. Let's see what happens. I am presented with the logon page. So here I could attempt to brute force my way in or I could do the right thing, which I'm going to do now, which is just to back out so that I don't do anything illegal. Now, as experienced pen testers or digital forensics experts, we know that there are certain types of FTP servers that are running a certain version of FTP software that are more vulnerable than others. So we can search for that particular vulnerable application that is being used for FTP up here in our search bar, wrapping it in quotes because it has more than one word. And this particular version of the FTP server, the VS FTPD version 2.3.4 is a well-known vulnerable version and allows us to have a back door if we can gain access to it. So let's go ahead and search for that. And we're going to do this worldwide. Our results come back and it lets us know that there are 3,541 different locations that are currently running this version of FTP software. As we scroll down, we can see the locations and the banner information that's being returned to us. All right. Now, if we wanted to, we could launch an exploit using Metasploit or the actual exploit itself in an attempt to gain access to this particular vulnerable FTP server. So let's say that my client is this one right here, Sunny at Stony Brook, and it is currently running this vulnerable version of the VS FTPD software version 2.3.4. I would like to see if I can get into that so that I can convince my client that they need to upgrade the software because it is vulnerable. Now I have my Kali installation currently up and I'm going to launch a terminal. And from here I'm going to type in MSF console to launch Metasploit. Give it a second and it should launch. So the first thing I want to do is find that exploit for this particular piece of FTP software. So I'm going to type in search FSTPD followed by the particular version number. And it comes up and it lets me know that yes, there is an exploit that is rated as excellent. And this is the one we're looking for right here. And this will allow us to gain a back door to this particular vulnerable version of this FTP software. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to copy the name of the exploit like this and I'm going to go back down here to my prompt and I'm going to type in use and I'm going to right click and paste that selection for the exploit that we need. I'm going to hit enter and now we have the exploit. Now I can look at the options that I have to fill in. The one option that we have to fill in here is for the remote host, and that's the IP that we have. So we need to set the remote host. So I'll type in set our host followed by that IP address. So let's go back on over and grab that IP address. So now we need to go back on over to our search engine, and we need to grab that IP address. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that IP address. And now I'm going to return back on over here to Kali, and I'm going to just right click and paste that information in here. So now I'm going to select the remote host as being that IP address target. I'll hit enter. And now if I just type in the word execute, I can attempt to connect 
and establish a back door to that vulnerable FTP server. But we're not going to do that because that's illegal. But if this was a client and I was conducting a pen test or a digital forensics investigation, I would want to do that to show that the machine is vulnerable to an attack. And so that's going to conclude this short video presentation on how we go about finding vulnerable devices on the Internet using the Shodan search engine. So if you have any questions or you have any concerns about any of the information that was presented to you so far, please don't hesitate to reach out and contact your instructor, and I'll see you in my next video.